Hi, Dr. Dewberry. Hello, class, whoever, whoever else is watching this. Um, so today, I wanted to talk about our latest supervised study assignment um, that we did. It was revolving, uh, I decided at least, um, I've done a lot of research on this in the past, and I wanted to follow up and do more research on it, which I was able to do with this assignment. So this was a little bit more fun for me. Uh, I studied before the emergence of sports betting and how it's gone from in person, you know, at the counter, you go and place a bet. This was, you know, even uh, after it was legalized and in some forms, but now everything's mobile. And I got into the, the evolution of mobile sports betting um, from counters to what we have now at homes. Uh, I've done previous research on this, which I cite in, the, in this actual um, study, because I think what I've done in the past adds to this. Um, a lot regarding behaviors and why everyone prefers to bet from you know their phones uh, or you know computers and so forth rather than driving to a sports book so that's that's one thing I've studied extensively and I cover that um, a little bit here as well um, which was also very fascinating um, so first off this was this was um, one of the more uh, ones that I can get into the labor end of it and the problem I identified with this was that on the labor side of things, it was the artificial intelligence having an impact. And believe it or not, it does have a big impact in sports betting, um, especially in artificial intelligence. And at least it's going to even further. Uh, I get into that a little bit uh, further in, but obviously as we know, and I give examples for this, when we talk about things like artificial intelligence, um, this can affect things like jobs. It can affect um, livelihoods, people that used to work behind counters at fast food restaurants, things like that. Um, you know, I even talk about, I even give it a personal example here um, of my observation. You know, you go to the Borgata in Atlantic City, you go to a BetMGM sports book, which is in person. People still go there to enjoy the game, but now there's kiosks to where you can actually place the bets. Um, you know, before it was, you go to a counter and you, and people, you know, take the bet for you, which you still can do. Just people are not preferring that way. People like the idea of going to a mobile kiosk and making things, it just makes things a lot easier for people. Um, I get into, you know, how this can be potentially a problem and how it's already been a problem in several industries of artificial intelligence being very good and very easy for all of us to, to use and to access. At the same time, it's, it's a job killer because those were humans working those jobs at one point. So, you know, like humans working behind the counters to take bets, now, now there's not as many workers. Um, this does not, this actually, for sports betting industries, I get into the irony of this. Um, sports betting industries can't afford to pay these kind of people, um, continue to at least, because during the pandemic in 2020, everybody, not everybody, but a, lar a, a lot of people, a lot more people were betting on sports because there was nothing else. You know, you were sitting at home and, um, you know, there wasn't much to do. So a lot of people in 2020 and even into 2021 and following through into now in 2022, um, a lot more people are placing bets on their phones and it's just gone up five times more, literally five times as I cite here um, in one of my articles. It's just increased dramatically uh, over the past couple of years. And like I said, the pandemic has a lot to do with that, of what we do. So um, that's another impact. People just stay home and it just make things, makes things a lot easier. Um, but this also eliminates the need for in-person work, in-person um, sports betting. And, and by and large, that also means um, job killing, uh, a job killers um, for a lot of those people that work behind counters. Um, but at the same time, you know, these industries, as I said before, they're very profitable. And these are, these are the same sports books and sports betting sites that over the past few years have really grown in, in revenue over the past few years. Now, of course, that's due to losing betters and them taking in money. Um, and that, that certainly happened. But as I cite here, according to Oxford Economics, uh, the sports betting industries in total are adding about $22 billion um, in just one year to our gross domestic product, which is uh, crazy to think because, you know, um, you know, rewind a little bit. Sports betting has been, was seen as um, very, you know, some, something very bad. You know, the NFL even, as I get into here uh, later on in, in this assignment, the NFL even um, – ban sports betting from from any like promoting any sports betting on, on any of their sponsorships or anything like that this was back in 2012 roger goodell actually declared a threat um, which i get into here as well uh and you know now it's 
it's, uh, you know, now it's embraced because it's a moneymaker for the NFL, which I get into here as well, because the NFL has big deals. Now there's advertising on um, for the Super Bowl this, this past year in 2022. Uh, just a few weeks ago, there was advertising for the Super Bowl for many different sports books. I mean, you could name Caesars, DraftKings, uh, FanDuel, any of your favorite sports books, they were on there for the Super Bowl. So that's a real evolution right there. Um, and if you told anybody, you know, a few years ago that you'd see sports betting advertisements for a Super Bowl, um, to the amount that it was for this year, se- this season, I mean, anyone would have said you're crazy. Um, so we've really come a long way in, in that regard. Um, I don't get into a solution here for artificial intelligence other than not to, other than that sports books really can't, don't need to use them, but at the same time, they're saving money. They don't have to pay someone. They can just, um, invest in machinery like a kiosk, as an example, for someone to place bets. Um, and that's really the solution. Uh, that's the only, there's really no solution. That's the only thing they do. Uh, because it's better to, for them, it's better as an industry uh, and for individual companies to save money uh, than, to, than to, you know, spend, than to keep paying people for, for these sort of things. It's just not a necessity, uh, quite honestly. Uh, and so we get into theories a little bit here as well, um, just to talk about why people I bet mobily uh, rather than in person. I talk about the magic bullet f- theory, how advertisements now, the increase in advertisements kind of forces people um, to want to bet more. And I think that's really important to talk about as well. So that was one theory I briefly touched on for a little bit, um, gave a little bit of understanding here. But yeah, just, just a lot of really extensive research on the idea that artificial intelligence is taking over in, uh, in, in industries all around in communication and digital technology. Uh, but it's going to have an even larger impact in sports betting, I think. And, uh, and I think that's the most important thing to acknowledge here. So while there isn't a solution, um, it's something to look out for. And this is going to require a lot of companies, um, not outside of sports betting companies and um, outside the industry, uh, they're going to have to adapt. And uh, we as humans are going to have to adapt uh, to, di- to different kind of jobs because these are going away pretty fast. So that's what I studied. Um, And I hope you enjoyed it because I did as well. Have a good one.